Hey, everybody. Zach Watovich here. Charlie Burt was still here. And I cut you off. It's the building code. <laughs> I was just so excited to say it. Yeah, no, I'm sorry if the middle of my sentence interrupted the start of yours. Yeah, well, it's just let us not happen. Let it happen again. Absolutely. It is Friday. Uh, it's a beautiful day. Beautiful. It's a, it almost feels like fall. It, it, we br- have, a little brisk breeze this morning. Brisk walking breeze. In. We got Husker football this weekend. Um, it's just an exciting day to be alive, and it's an exciting day to be in the studio. Well, first time in a while, you and I have been together. It, it is. There's going to be some intermixing on the the stream episodes. Of We have some special guests. Courtney Matern, you had a shot with her. I had a shot with her. Uh, we're still unsure what that means for us. I'm just kidding. They're not, they're not going to take us anywhere. Thank you. Yeah, well, maybe. Famous last words. <laughs> but yeah, it does feel good to be back. Um, and with a guest that has been on the building code multiple times. Zach, who do we have today? Yeah, we got Melissa Harishko out of Calgary, Canada. She's Canada. a native of the United States citizen, but has moved to Canada. We're going to get all into that. She's got a ton of energy. They've got a great story. Their homes are incredible. Beautiful. I cannot wait to talk. Let's not delay further <laughs> and get her in here. Hey, Melissa, welcome back to The Building Code. It's so great to have you on. It's actually Charlie and I's first time meeting you, but you're a third time guest. That's a Big rare time. club. Very rare. Thank you for third coming back. To John. Yes, it's going to be your best. <laughs> there we go. How are you? I'm good. How are you guys today? Doing fantastic. Um, for the listeners out there that weren't lucky enough to catch your first couple episodes, uh, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, my name is Melissa Hershko. I live in Calgary, Alberta, and my husband and I own a luxury custom home building company called Veranda Estate Homes. And we've been with Builder Trend for a very, very, very long time, which we were talking about uh, before we jumped onto this podcast. So uh, we build about, on average, 10 to 12 homes a year. Everything is fully custom from the floor plan to the millwork. And I am the design brains kind of behind all of the homes and what you see on our website and my Instagram page. Well, that's, yeah, fantastic. And we were looking at your website before this and Veranda Homes has been around for almost 50 years. Is that correct? That is correct. So next year is our, you know, if you want to call it the 50 year anniversary for Veranda Homes. And that actually goes back to 1974 when Rob's dad started building um, in Calgary. And it's actually kind of a neat story the way that Rob's dad actually got into the industry because he was an immigrant from Poland, came, was doing cribbing, which that's what we call it up here. Down cribbing, the foundation, cribbing, <laughs> cribbers. Um, so he was doing the foundation section of the homes and the market tanked here. And one of his builders couldn't afford to pay him his invoices. And he said, listen, take this lot. This is the only way I can pay you. Take it before the bank takes it. And that is what started what you basically see today. So wow. from Rob's dad acquiring this one land piece of land, he was able to build over the years, you know, an incredibly successful company throughout the eighties and nineties, they were in various subdivision communities building, not what we build today, um, but building, you know, anywhere from two to 300 homes within each community, you know, you have your stock floor plans and everything else. And then when Rob and I kind of took over after his dad decided to retire and go fishing, we kind of segued more into the luxury custom market. Um, but we do have an interesting opportunity, which unfortunately I really can't say too much about, um, coming up soon, which is going to kind of open up the doors to a lot more people being able to have a beautiful veranda home, which we're excited about. Wow. Well, whenever you can talk about that, you may need to come on the podcast for a fourth time. and we can... Which only like three people have ever done. So yeah. That's a... And we can do the, the news drop here. We'd love to break that story. Charlie loves a good scoop. Yeah. So as soon I as you said it, his eyes lit up. He's like, "Oh my gosh, we gotta have this." Yeah, I actually, I, I was texting, I was texting Rob, and I was like, "Hey," and he's like, mm, "Nope." He's like, "No, <laughs> not uh, yet, not he's today." Like, no, okay, All not right. today. Um, but I think it would be good because it's 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 a very exciting opportunity. Um, you know, it, it's something that's yeah. It's, it's going to be great. That's all I'll say. Well, that's a great teaser right there. Um, so when did you and Rob kind of take over the business? Um, 2001. So we were, I was working in the show home at the time. We had a show home in a golf course community in the Northwest area of Calgary called Links Ridge. And Rob walks in the show home and he's like, my dad's done. I'm like, oh, okay. So he'll be back tomorrow. He's like, no, he's done. He threw up his hands. He said, I'm bleeping done. I'm not doing this anymore. And he walked off a job site. Oh my God. That's how I want to go out. Yeah. I just want to be like, Peace. That's going to be it's been a ride. like four days from now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll see what Monday's like. Yeah. Incredible. So, Mad respect. Kind of like we looked at each other we're like, 
okay, so what does that mean? And I mean, we were super young at the time. We had like, you know, we were just engaged, didn't know what to do, had to scramble money together. We ended up buying the show home that we were in at the time, which back in 2001 was 2,700 square foot bungalow with 2,350 square feet developed in the basement. Cause I still remember every detail about that house. But at that time it was listed for 950,000 home lot and tax. And that was unheard of. Like we had people driving from all over Calgary coming to see a million dollar home in Calgary, um, which now like that's normal. And we're like, oh my God, how are we gonna do this? And I remember we like double mortgage, everything else, buy the show home, had it open on the weekends while we're living in it. You know, I'm cleaning, trying to hide pug hair that was all over the floor. Um, and it was just, you know, baby steps, one step at a time. We got one client and then we found an opportunity to do an inner city home. A piece of property came up, take out another loan. Like why not leverage the heck out of you? And uh, did that first inner city home and then it it just kind of escalated you know year by year we started getting more and more clients um based on our reputation because that is what we will live and die by um until this company is no longer because that is all you have is your reputation and i know builders have such a crappy reputation not all builders but a lot of builders have a really crappy reputation and so that has been our goal throughout years has been to service the hell out of our clients and just make sure that you know the one happy person tells five people and i don't have one unhappy person that's going to tell 500 people so i love it and you know we were well, i was looking at your website the work speaks for itself it's actually one of my favorite things about construction is you get to see the product you know you get to like it's not like other things where it's a lot of promising. You actually get to deliver on it. And it, it's just, right. I was kind of like taken aback. Not just like, I, I've seen a lot of houses like, wow, the design on these are incredible. It's really, really special. Um, I'm kind of interested, you know, you're, you're running this business with your husband. What's that like? You know, this family run business is, what is your guys' working relationship within the the process? You're on the design side. Is he in operations? Is he still building? Like, what what does that look like? I, I tell people I make it pretty. He makes sure it stands up. Um, <laughs> what I a deadly joke. combo. Well, yeah. deadly, uh, I awesome. Joke, the two things you need. He's in the office yeah. and signs checks. He doesn't do anything anyways. <laughs> but no, he's really like behind the operation yeah. um, side of life. He is still on job sites multiple times a week. You know, keeping an eye, we have amazing construction manager who like I bow down to Garth. He's the bomb.com. And Huge then shout out, Garth. we have two amazing project managers again, who I absolutely love and adore. And I mean, Shannon and Esme, I mean, our whole team, like what we have built, especially over this last year, getting geared up for some very exciting news to come soon, yeah. has just Another been, tease. Love it, it. it just makes me so happy. Like, I remember when we closed out one home a few months ago, I looked over at the guys, like our two project managers were there and I started crying and they're like, what's wrong? I'm like, I am just so freaking happy. I love you guys. Because our thing is when we turn over a home, I don't want to see more than five deficiencies. Like I'm talking to paint touch up is one deficiency and they just continually like they treat this business as their own and that just to me speaks of volumes but rob and i's working relationship it's all we've known he may have been my boss before he was my boyfriend turned fiance turned husband of almost 19 years so this is all we've ever known but we're really good at when we do take those you know date nights or weekends away where try to limit the shop talk. I mean, it is next to impossible because there's always something that's going to come up. Um, but we really try to focus because when we are here and we are working, we're working 24 seven. But when we do take that time away with either just us or with our two boys, it's about family time and connecting and not just being like going through the motions of life. And the only time that we ever argue is about work. <laughs> right. And he doesn't seem to think of that, like believe that, but it's, it's true. It sounds kind of familiar. Yeah. Not in a building context. It happens. It happens. Yeah. Charlie's engaged. So he's, you know, you're going to learn. You're yeah. going to learn. Yeah. It sounds like if I just recently got engaged. So it sounds like it'd be a good time to take out a second mortgage and <laughs> start running a business together. Right. Yeah. It's the reverse, you know, sure. your father in law like walking off. It's the go all in at the beginning, <laughs> you know, just absolutely okay. go full send. No risk, no reward. There so, you go. Yeah. I and Charlie, that. just remember, happy wife, happy life, my friend. There you go. Yeah, let's just turn this podcast into like a relationship. Uh, <laughs> Relationships of construction. Lifestyle. How do you yeah. survive? Hey, 
my part-time job as a marriage counselor between my clients, keeping oh, both, great point. Like, both well, you know, clients happy and <laughs> both guys happy. I mean, yeah, because being with one client yesterday, and she's like, he wants a ceiling fan in the bedroom. I'm like, oh, unfortunately, those are against code in Veranda Homes. You can't have ceiling fans in bedrooms here. And he's like, what? <laughs> the arbiter. Oh. Yeah. I was like, don't worry. I said, we'll we'll get to that point. Let's work. Let's focus on the floor plan right now first, and then we'll get to your possible ceiling fan in your bedroom. I love it. Um, something I love whenever we have kind of design build. Um, people on the podcast is to, cause I feel like everyone does it slightly differently is what is the kind of life cycle of a customer first comes to you and says, I'm interested in working with you guys to the final walkthrough. Can you kind of walk us through your process? Cliff notes, um, initial meeting. Hi, it's great to meet you. Amazing. Here's our portfolio. Obviously if people are coming to us, I do believe that they're very familiar with our portfolio. Um, and then, you know, kind of have a discovery meeting. You can call it per se. We're going to discuss, you know, what sort of budget you have, what sort of home you're looking for, what are the key features that you want to be in it, what is your timeline. Um, from that, we go have a lifestyle questionnaire that clients fill out, which is about a 12 page form. And it just kind of walks them through the home, room by room, section by section, like what sort of exterior do you envision? What sort of front door? Um, very detailed. And the reason we do that is we actually use that lifestyle questionnaire to create a very detailed proposal that we are able to present to the clients before we even have a floor plan. And then this allows us to give them a ballpark range of what we feel the home is going to cost based on the features and the items that they have told us in size that they want to be in the home. Um, from that stage, we go into the design agreement stage where we start the design and the floor plan design, you know, typically main floor and upper floor first, then we move to elevations and then the basement. And then once that all gets completed, um, we send that out to tender, solidify the pricing, whether it's going to be cost plus or fixed price, because we do both. Oh, and then from there, we go into the purchase agreement, start construction, um, you know, use builder trend throughout the entire process to take care of change orders, take care of our scheduling, sending out POs, everything else. And we use that throughout the process. Typically, honestly, with most of our clients, I only meet with them in person on average two to three times, some a lot more, but most of our clients come to us because they trust the process. They see, they've seen our work, they trust what I'm doing. And it's more to get like that tactile experience, like when it's time to make selections or it's time to do the electrical walkthrough to make sure everything is absolutely perfect. Um, so we'll kind of do that. And then, you know, the guys on site are kicking it. They are making sure that the home is perfect. So typically a home is actually completed about a month before we turn it over. And then mm -hmm. we use that last month of construction to make sure that, you know, if there's a nail pop, that drywall is touched up, it's paint touched up. If a cabinet door is warped, that door is getting replaced, it's getting repainted, it's getting put on, you know, and to kind of like feel out the home, to massage it a bit. Um, so then clients aren't moving into a house that has blue tape all over the walls or something like that. And then our client walkthrough, the last meeting that we do, again, I cry. I'm usually not really an emotional person, <laughs> but I always cry on possession day because it's typically about an 18 month to a two plus year relationship that you have. And it's also a relationship that I have with these homes because I'm on site constantly throughout the build, popping in, going in, checking, taking quick videos, talking to the guys and all of a sudden like I'm now turning around and I don't have a key and I can't just walk in. I mean, some clients have told me I could, but I haven't done that yet. You know, so you're almost like, like you're raising this child. And now you're handing it away and you're like, please be good to my baby. <laughs> and it's funny because our aftercare process, like we do a three month, six month and one year walkthrough with our clients. And some of the PMs, one in particular, he'll text me and he's like, you'd be really proud of so-and-so. The house is meticulous. I'm like, okay, thank you. Thank you. They're that good hands. Me yeah, they're taking care of my baby. Um, so yeah, that's kind of like the process from start to build, but also a little bit of after, because as I mentioned, you know, the reputation and the service aspect of it is so, is such a big part of our business. So with the service, we do the three month, six month, one year walkthrough. But if you've been in your home for 15 years, Hey, Melissa, listen, I got a window, like the seal's broken. No problem. Let me get you in touch with the window company. Everything else like we'll arrange for stuff. We're not going away. It's not a taillight warranty. We are there for the long haul. That's amazing. There's so many 
directions I want to take this. I'm like <laughs> trying to pick which one. A the lot, yeah, of, lot of threads to pull on. I've met a few builders that do that warranty. I had a builder that out in Portland. He was a custom home builder and he lived in the neighborhood he developed. And so he would let... Which I would never do. I know, I know. I was like, bold, man. His name was Joe. And yeah. so like his neighbors would stop by and be like, yeah, yeah I got mm -hmm. this siding issue. But he, he offered lifetime warranties because he yeah. a lot of those same things. They just, that extra care went so far for new business that Absolutely. it made it. And it's going to show that you're going to stand behind your product. Yeah. And you're not just here to like whip up a disposable home and take a check to the bank and then walk away. Like we're not in the business just to build one home. I want to build two or three homes for each client, you know, and, and we have for multiple clients. I have two homes on the go right now that are repeat clients. And I think that that says a lot about the company as well. Yeah, that's incredible. And then I was thinking about 50 years of business and I'm just thinking as you're going through your process, this thing is dialed. It is like, is that a product of just being in mm. building so long or is it something that you guys like innovated on in, in your time in the last 20 years? So I, I really feel like it's something that Rob and I have taken on ourselves over the last 20 years because it was a very different business concept mm -hmm. when his father was building, you know, when you were, you know, in that show home with high pick your five floor mm -hmm. plans and everything else um, to what we have done, but it's just, it, it, that's always been something that's very important to Rob and I, um, you know, we're the, the type of individuals that in our life in general, like, you know, you kind of believe in karma and put out what you want into the world and manifest the good and, you know, a little rainbows and glitter and unicorns. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, that's really like, that's how we live our life on a daily basis. And that's how we want to live our company as well. And like live with the company, you know, we're straight shooters, no BS, like what you see is what you get. You know, same with like the proposals and pricing. Like a lot of times we go in and clients are like, well, this other builder said that they could do it for this much less. I'm like, okay, well, let's compare notes and let's see, because I could build it for that, but it's not going to have this, 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 and this, which you said you wanted, you know, and we don't want that situation where during the build, oh, well, I wanted a solid marble backsplash. Oh, sorry, it's on the budget. That's going to be, you know, $10,000 or whatever, because those are uncomfortable conversations for me to have mm -hmm. with our client. Um, and it's also an uncomfortable situation for the client because this is their largest commitment financially that they'll probably ever make in their lifetime. And that needs to be respected. And you need to follow through with that. You know, not everybody has money trees. I know I don't. <laughs> so far, just green leaves. <laughs> How, uh, so when you are working with a client to design a home i'm assuming you, you kind of mentioned you have a reputation you, you have a portfolio that you work with how do you personally and as, as a company especially being in business so long kind of stay on top of where the industry is moving and what specific design trends are because i'm sure the homes you were building back in 2003 look very different than the homes you're building now you have a full-time job so you're working to do it how do you I, I, I beg to differ. I beg you to go on our website and tell me which home was built in which year. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I could be absolutely 100% wrong. She there. just put I, you right on the spot. I had, just, I had no back to that we statement should, we should I play, made. We should play a game. It could be a fun game. It is Friday afternoon. That'd be a fun all. segment. That like, would be a fun show segment. Show a home and guess the year. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I really honestly, I don't love the word trend because I feel like trend kind of has like a bad stigma. Hold on. Yeah. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you mean, builder trend? Come on. Well, okay, no, like trend in homes. Okay, <laughs> I love you know I love builder trend. Okay, I'm here for a third time. Come builder on. blank. Um, <laughs> builder so me out. Like with interiors and everything else, whenever we're designing them, I really want to focus on the client. So I mean, I look at how they dress, I look at how they act, and I swear that you can look at my client and you would be able to say, oh, that's their home. Mm. You know, like. I had one client that showed up, she always had a string of pearls on and like very soft pastel clothes. And she was like so soft-spoken and, and everything else. And her home is a reflection of her and like her style and everything else. Um, so it's really about narrowing in. And a lot of times I get asked because I don't have a lot of modern portfolio items yet, but we have some amazing modern homes, which Melissa is very happy about coming up because that's actually my own personal aesthetic is more contemporary and more modern but people want what they've seen, you know? So if people are like, oh, I love what you did in this home. I wanna do something similar. It's like, okay. So like right now, 
I told my supplier for base material, I'm like, I need you to eat a lot of fiber because I need so much panel mold. I'm going to need it to be like coming out like crazy because it's like going in everywhere. And I understand that's a look and it's very style specific and it's a beautiful feature, but it's kind of like, you know, let's do it, but let's do it just right. Let's not go overboard with it. Like less is more kind of approach for us, which is why I think a lot of our homes will kind of last the test of time. Like a lot of the homes, even on my Instagram, like I'll post homes that are up to like 15 years old on my Instagram account, you know, and like I see things that I would do different. Like maybe I want to done all glass uppers for the cabinets, or I would have done, you know, a little bit of a warmer color and everything else. But for the structure of the home itself and for the overall, like the cabinets and the way that they're built, I try to keep in mind that I want those to age incredibly well. And maybe if you do want to change with the trends, it's, you know, a new paint color or a new skin color or a hardware finish, you know, because again, you know, we're not building disposable homes. Like our cabinets are handcrafted on site. If I walk in, I see a sledgehammer coming up an Ikea truck driving up the driveway, like I'll throw myself in front of the truck. Like that just can't happen with the way that we do things. So it's, uh, yeah. So we always try to think whenever we're designing it, like one, what does the client want? Um, what are the trends? I'll use the word, but what are the trends? Um, and I ask the clients, like, is this a long-term home? If you plan on only living in this for two or three years and you want all brass, everything, okay, let's go with it. But if this is your long-term home, let's do some mixed metal. So, you know, if you do get sick of the brass faucet, then you're only changing out plumbing fixtures. You're not changing out lighting and cabinet hardware too, and everything else. So it's kind of just finding that good balance yeah. within the design. That's one thing that you said that I think is super interesting is like, the personality of the client and like meeting with them and their aesthetic and things like that, being able to match the home. Another fun game that we should play is like build a home for Zach. <laughs> like now that you have met Zach for 30 minutes now, I'd love to see <laughs> what you will put in his home. Yeah. Just really dark, dark. brooding, dark sad. <laughs> we made you the bat cave. <laughs> yeah. Maybe some stalactites coming really? All over see? that. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that is really interesting though. Yeah. That, that I really like that process. We've talked to quite a few design build firms and they all kind of have a different approach to it, which is really cool. Some are really uh, exploratory. Some are more, you know, personality psychology based. Like it, it's interesting mm-hmm. to hear kind of everybody's own. It's, I consider it like a creative process. You know, it's like art. You're describing something that is art that is going to, you're going to infuse some of you into it, but it's working with the client to kind of make it their vision and their dream. Um, what is that experience like with your clients? Do they do they let you just have a blank canvas? They like want your vision ever, or do you really? Every kind of, every no? client's different. Yeah, I have one client that said, "Here's our budget. Don't go over. Do what you want." Yeah, perfect. Fun. I have another client right now that um, I mean, we hammered through the millwork and the selections in no time. Everything. I'm like, here you go. She's like, oh my god, love it. I'm like, perfect. You know. And then I've had other clients who want to be incredibly involved you know i have one client where i think we redrew her pantry 23 times her pantry and, mm-hmm. wow <laughs> yeah it was a very important pantry. I was like, how'd the rest of the house go <laughs> yeah um very similarly to that and which is fine and i mean it, it's kind of it's it's those clients that are like one and done that kind of balance out those clients that you know want to see all the options and that's what we're here for i mean you know you're building a multi-million dollar home you want me to draw it 12 different ways? I'll draw it 12 different ways. Like that's totally fine. And back in the day, I actually used to do all of our millwork by hand. And Melissa obviously like had, you know, a premonition of what was coming. And I hired an assistant, Jordan, who I adore. And she now takes all of my chicken scratches that's still to scale, but she takes them and implements them into CAD. So when I do need to move something by two inches, I'm not sitting here with an eraser going like this and redrawing. I'm like, okay, change this, do this and everything else. And that has been like such a game changer for me because I was so afraid to hire somebody to work with me for so long. I mean, obviously, because she's just started six months ago, you know? Oh, wow. You were hand drawing your mill designs? Oh my God. Not our plans, but all the millwork. So all of my cabinet layouts, all of my everything, like down to like each style and rail of each cabinet door and yeah, it was fun. That's got to, is that yeah. Intel, traditional? Until I mean, six months ago too, is that what you said? Hmm. Yeah, everything was all hand-drawn until six months. I mean, it still is. Like, I yeah. still like 
any concept, like I'll still, and when I do my concepts, I still draw it by hand. And I still do it to scale just so I can see proportionally because I'm very like kind of a freak about like proportion and scale and everything else and how lights relate to, you know, everything else. And yeah, so up until six months ago, but now I'll still like, I'll draw it to scale, but it's more like quick chicken scratch. You know, I'm not spending time to do like, you know, a one and a half inch style and rail around each cabinet door with like the, the knob placement or the pull placement. Like now it's like quick here, there knob here, this giving her measurements and then like try to try to read my handwriting. <laughs> yeah, that is fascinating. Is there ever any, um, anything that a client has wanted that you just like, a hundred percent do not agree with and you just kind of throw up your hands like okay if you say so I, I don't think it'll look very good um well last week i had a client and we had to pick their front door we're doing a custom wood front door and i mean this client i have a very good relationship with like we go out for dinner and everything else and they sent through the front door and i'm like i'm sorry 1982 calls and <laughs> that's, not, that's not allowed Oof. i said i don't know where you're finding these front doors because i didn't even know if they were still on the web on the internet but we're not going to do that for your new home okay and they're like well what's wrong with it i'm like well where do you want me to start for <laughs> way down and i was like you know it doesn't suit the aesthetic of the home and everything else i mean i'll tell all of my clients i will always give my opinion you can take it or you can leave it like this is your home yeah. you're the one having to live in it i'm designing the home for you not for me but when you are going to pick out like a door with you know it, an arched etched glass insert for this modern beautiful home i'm gonna have to question you on yeah. that because you know, they kind of stay in your lane a bit. <laughs> he joked about it. We picked out, a, we designed a beautiful front door. They're like what? I'm eclectic. I'm trying to be, <laughs> I'm trying to be yeah. unique. No, yeah. no, don't do that. So I mean, there are times where I may not agree, but again, it's, it's not my money and it's not, you know, as Rob says, we're not in the business of saying no. You know, if you, right. if, if you come in and we sign this first scream and this is what we're building, then you come in and you're like, I want to backlight all of my walls in onyx and quartzite. Okay. No problem. Here's the price. Don't want to do it. Great. Let's do it. You know, we'll do anything you want. It's just, just know that there's going to be a price and possibly a timeline associated with that as well. Do you guys help at all with like interior finish, like design of the aesthetics of the materials and furniture? I do. I do some materials, like all countertops, all lighting, mm -hmm. all cabinet pulls. That's all me. Mm -hmm. Flooring, paint colors. Um, and then we work with Heather from the Heather company. Um, not every client, goes that way because some clients are like oh we'll do it off like restoration or whatever so when clients do want more of that turnkey experience which we have a lot of clients that do at least minimum minimally for drapery and window covering so they can move in and have that mm -hmm. done um and then we have some clients that do full home um turnkey with her so then heather and i will work together with the clients you know like i'll give her my mood boards and my selections and then she kind of builds that based off of you know what the client's budget is and what they're wanting so some homes Homes have um, like the one that's turning over next month, like she's done all the furniture throughout the main level and then the primary suite and then everything else the client is bringing from home and then they'll move it in and realize that the scale doesn't work and then she'll come in and do the rest of the house. So. I was just, I thought of it because you're talking about like the Ikea cabinets like, well, then it's like you $2 million home. I got the Ikea furniture, right. you know, <laughs> I feel I like you got to go all the way. I actually had a client last year ask me, they said, can we just put Ikea cabinets in our closets? And I was like, I'm sorry, what did you just say to me? And I, I will say like, I have very, very good relationships with a lot of our clients and a lot of our clients become very good friends. Like we travel with clients and everything else. So, you know, I wouldn't say that to every client, but I was just like, what did you just say to me? I'm like, I'm sorry. I thought we were friends. Connected. Yeah. And Not of easy. course, of course, we love the good people over at IKEA. Uh, we don't want to get. <laughs> We're going to hurt assist. our sponsorship chances yeah, if we keep no, this okay. up. We better great, great product, great very products, affordable great options for some people. Yeah, of course. And it is, and there's a time and a place for it. That's right. But, Me you know, in college. And, and, yeah. Yeah. I would actually love if we got served a cease and desist from IKEA. <laughs> That's how I know we made it in the podcast and industry. I if someone from their corporate headquarters listened to this. I was worried about saying a bad word, and instead, I'm just going to get you guys sued. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I no, that'd be, that'd be not the first time. No, I'm just kidding. That would, okay. that'd be hilarious. Uh, I'd love that notch in my belt. We're I, this, this, this interview is flown by Melissa. You got yeah, so I much energy, time you're too, so much like, oh. fun to listen to. Uh, I do. I want to ask one last question and it's a little bit of a side tangent based on something you said and it's not on the script. So, oh boy. yeah, you mentioned how you delegated, you, you hired 
your CAD person. How, how have you changed as like a business owner over the last, you know, five, 10, 20 years? Like, what do you know now that you wish you would have known when you were, you know, getting started? I know it's not so, on the script, so it's like really on the spot. If I, here. if I knew that much, I wouldn't be here. I'd be <laughs> on a beach retired, my friend. Um, Good point. You know what? It, it's and it, even like Jordan asked me when she first started, she's like, When did you know everything? I'm like, Girlfriend, I, said, I don't know everything. <laughs> I said, I still learn something in every single home, every single kitchen design. I said, it, It's when you stop learning, you're going to fail yourself, you know? So you always want to evolve. And that's even with our business. I will 100% admit. Rob is amazing at business development and, you know, like he's the type, he listens to motivational podcast and oh, I heard about them like yeah, on a podcast, whatever. Melissa doesn't do that. You know, even though I'm on podcast, I, you know, I'll listen to them, but it's not like he's like so good at self-improvement, business development. And I will admit I'm the pushback queen between the two of us because I just, I don't like change. Like I was mentioning to you before we jumped on about how we're implementing cost codes and everything mm -hmm. else in with builder trend and everything else to just track better, um, you know, where things are going. And Rob was like, you can't keep doing change orders just by doing them. Like you need to put line items for each thing and cost codes. And like, you would have thought that somebody like, you know, was taking away my puppy or something. I was like, but why? And it's just, because I don't like new things. Mm -hmm. So I'm the pushback queen, but I give Rob so much props for what he does and for putting up with me and my hesitancy to make changes. But I will say everything that we have done over the past five, 10 years has just helped us to become more and more successful. And even after dealing with, you know, when COVID went through and everything else, I hate talking about it, but it's a reality and it's what we all had to live through. And it really took us for a turn in our industry up in Calgary. You know, I remember I was chatting, like I had a builder group of guys um, on Instagram. I was chatting, I'm like, what are you guys seeing down there? I'm like, oh, it's still busy. And I'm like, everybody's walking here. Like, I don't, I don't know what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. And then the lumber and then everything. And, you know, so to be able to come out of that, and still be here and just continue on this path of growth and you know the things on the horizon and everything else it's it's good but the only thing i can say is i've never stopped learning you can't ever stop learning and yeah lots of exciting things that i haven't given too much pushback to i love it that i mean that's just an incredible mindset i i love your quote in there is when you stop learning is when you'll start to fail i think oftentimes people have this like destination in their mind of like oh i'm close to knowing everything and then it'll be perfect and that's the exact opposite mindset that you want so if i could only get that through my 17 and 15 year old child it would be perfect <laughs> as two they, former yeah. teenage boys yeah. it takes a little more time don't give up hope actually know everything i didn't know if you knew that <laughs> i like i tell that to people is you know if I, all i've done since i was 17 is get dumber well i don't know i knew everything then it's just how it goes yeah. I know. Like, I was yeah. A my, my 17 year old kids even telling me how to drive. And I'm like, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> uh, well, Melissa, thank you so much for coming yep. back on the building code. You're going to be on again. It's happening. We're yeah. calling it's this happening. shot. It's so. happening. There's big, there's big things happening and it's going to be a very different thing. And I think it will be well worth the chat once, uh, once we get our feet wet with it. Very, 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 very exciting. Well, thank you so much for your time, Melissa. Thank you guys. Have a great weekend. All right, we just had Melissa on from Veranda Homes. Charlie, that was a lot of fun. That was. Honestly, not a very scripted episode. We did not stick to the script. Yeah, I feel bad um, for whoever wrote our questions because I feel like we did a poor job following them. But shout we out also Chelsea always writes the questions. Shout we out follow Chelsea. 50% of the time, but... Uh, I will say that Melissa did a really good job of like answering a lot of them just organically. Yes. So it's not really our fault for not asking them if she already had answers, but... When you have a guest that you just are kind of like drawn to, you can just tell like with Melissa, she's just a magnetic personality. She brings out the excitement. She's passionate. You yeah. just like, you kind of just want to jump in. There's a couple of times you and I were almost like talking it over each other, trying yeah, to get a question. In. Exactly. The passion is definitely there. And I, I feel like I say this a lot and I promise this is uh, unique each time I say it, we're not replaying my statement, but like I always leave these interviews so much more motivated 
than when I came into them. I came into this interview, it's Friday. I was like, oh, I want to go golf this afternoon. Like, what do I need to do? This guy phones it in. Yeah, I was getting ready to. And then you go and talk to a person like Melissa and like, okay, I'm going to skip lunch today. Let's go back to my desk and like, let's grind it out. Work. Let's yeah. go bring value to our customers. Yeah, bring value to our shareholders too. So, uh, no, she was great. I, I also really enjoy, and it's probably just lack or uh, lack of knowledge or ignorance on my part, but I enjoy talking to our customers that really focus on the design side mm, because that's not a area where I have a whole lot of exposure. Yeah. And I just find it so fascinating, especially like high end custom homes, like they're building and like someone putting in, you know, multi million dollars for their, you know, forever home, you have to nail it. <laughs> and to talk to someone like Melissa and see kind of all the checkpoints and unique touch points where they're giving advice, where they're listening to their clients. And I mean, the fact that she like bases her designs off of personalities and aesthetics of how they dress and things like that. I mean, I'd have to imagine Melissa is like one of the best designers in the world. Mm -hmm. Like that's, it was just, it was inspiring and, and, and I learned a ton as always. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of really interesting conversation points. I found it really interesting. She, she talked about how she posts older homes on Instagram. Yeah. And I'm going to go, know. I'm looking them up after this. And I don't I'm know if I've ever on met anybody that does that or at least like, like talked about why it's super smart. It's like almost a way to position your brand. as like, this is going to last forever. Yeah. And we're going to highlight your home regardless of its status of new, new kid on the block or something yeah. that built. And that's in my head. It was, again, it goes back to its works of art, the hand drawing, yeah, the labor, the the starting from scratch. But I was really impressed with her process. They, like the way she described it, like rattled it off. No, it's like everything was crystal clear. Like I was a customer, I would feel really secure. And it just, I was thinking of a lot about the business practices and the scalability of why right. they've been in business for fifty years because they have those systems, they have those processes, and they've really just got it to a system. Yeah. Like three times meeting with a customer for a three million dollar home. Yeah, I. I I, they're, that's they're, insane. They're focused on the right things for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. When you said uh, there was a moment in the interview when you're like, gosh, it's like you're building art. It's a work of art. It's just it is so uh, profound of a statement that you're made there. I'm wanted, deeper than people think. Yeah. Sipping on some red wine. That's right. Say, oh, oh, God, I mean, everybody knows in the office, a big specialty coffee guy for a reason. It's yeah. Deep absolutely. in there. Um, but no, I'm excited. I'm going to go check out their Instagram um, right after this, and I'm going to comment on every single picture a year that I, I thought the house was built. So that you can also get a trip to Calgary, and they can give you a little tour. I was thinking next year for the 50-year anniversary, we Let's should probably up. go out there and do yeah. a live, yeah. live for, podcast. For the fourth episode of the podcast. And she can drop her big scoop. Yeah. All right, we'll make that happen. We'll make that happen. Put it in the, put it in the future. Put it in the future. Manifest it, as Melissa would say. Um, but no, great interview, great Friday, great episode. I great friends. Have, I don't have anything else. Yeah, great friends, of course. Go Huskers this weekend. That's right. Thanks, everybody. We'll catch you next time. I'm Charlie Bertwistle. And I'm Zach Wachowicz. And this is The Building Code. See you. Thanks for watching the video. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for exclusive content brought to you by Builder Trend.